It was great on the chairlift. Uh, super easy to put on the trays. Went up the chair, didn't fall off. Man, I was, I was pretty stoked That's on that good, performance. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Mike Kazmer. We're here in Pemberton, British Columbia for the Pink Bike Field Test. We're going to be taking a look at the new Yeti SB165. This bike debuted earlier this summer. It has 165 millimeters of rear travel and 180 millimeter fork up front, 27.5 inch wheels. It's basically the replacement to the SB6, although this is a bigger, burlier bike than that thing ever was. According to Yeti, this bike is designed for hucking, sending, and enduroing. But before we talk about that, let's go into the details of the bike itself. Component highlights for this model include the SRAM X01 12-speed drivetrain, we got SRAM code RSC brakes, uh, suspension's handled by Fox, there's a Fox 36 with a grip 2 damper up front, and a Fox DHX2 coil shock in the rear. There's also a DT Swiss EX1700 aluminum wheel set. Like the other bikes in Yeti's lineup, this one has a Switch Infinity suspension design. Basically what that is, is two rails, Kashima coated rails that are located just above the bottom bracket. As the bike goes through its travel, the position of that slider changes and it affects how the bike feels. Early on in the travel, it's designed to give it a more snappy, efficient feel when you're cranking on the pedals on smoother terrain. But bigger hits, it's designed to decrease the amount of chain growth and just give it a more plush, bottomless feel. Yeti wanted the SB165 to work really well with a coil shock, so they gave it a 27.5% leverage ratio progression. You can compare that to the 15% leverage ratio progression found on the SB150. Basically, that should help the bike ramp up more as it goes through its travel. It just helps it take those big hits better, and you won't be clanging at the bottom at every huck to flat. Some of the other key frame details include the all-important room for water bottle. You can't go free riding without being hydrated. It's also got room for a longer travel dropper post. Large and XL sizes come with a 175 millimeter dropper. There's ISCG05 tabs, so you can mount a bash guard and a little chain guide there. And it also has internal cable routing and down tube protection, along with chain stay and seat stay protection. Yeah, so for tires, I put 22 and 23 PSI front and rear. Um, Yeti has a handy set suspension setup guide online. I Pretty much followed that. I sped up the rebound in the shock a little bit and I closed down the compression on uh, the shock as well. For me, I'm a little bit lighter than Jason, so I ran 20 pounds up front, 22 in the rear for the tires. Uh, I also ran a lighter weight shock, 400 pounds for me. And as far as the compression and rebound tunes go, I started with what Yay recommended, lighten things up a bit, but their suspension guide is a great place to start. Really handy to have that tool, especially with a bike like this that has lots of adjustments. We should also mention that the bike was set up with the control tires that we've been using. We were both on a size large, reach was 480. Felt pretty comfortable for both of us, to be honest. Yeah, I'm 5'11", Jason is 6'1", so kind of both fall in that size range. We'll talk more about that when we get those ride impressions. Yeah, for sure. I think if I was racing, I'd maybe opt for the XL, but for a ride in the park, 480 felt pretty spot on. I get along really well with Yeti's new geometry numbers. So with this bike, it's got that 77 degree seat tube angle, and that kind of puts me in a nice upright position. And even though it has a really slack head tube angle, 63.5 degrees, it's very manageable. I mean, there are some sections, but it gets really tight, some, you know, super close switchbacks. Uh, you can kind of feel the front end, takes a little more effort to navigate, but overall, it's a manageable bike, especially considering how much travel it has and what it's really intended for. The SB165 has fairly short chain stays, and those do help kind of make it easy to whip around. It's got a long front center, you can really carve it around. Um, it does sacrifice a little bit of its outright stability, I'd say. You're not gonna set any land speed records, but this bike just kind of wants to play. It does feel like that park bike, uh, if you like to get sideways. It's a great bike for that. And if racing is your thing, you could race this bike, but yet he does make the SB150, 29 inch wheels. That one feels more race oriented. This one, it's a really fun bike just to kind of goof around on and have a good time. Yeah, so the Yeti was super quick and snappy to get up to speed. Uh, inspired me to do a lot of, you know, popping around, hopping, manualing tables, all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe not as, you know, composed through the high speed chunder as the Enduro, for example, uh, but still a ton of fun in the park. I definitely experienced a few bottom outs, uh, but you know what? Didn't really feel that harsh to me. I didn't hear a big sound or anything. Yeah, it uses its travel. You can make the most of all that 165 mils, uh, but there's no clanging or bad, scary noises, anything like that. Yeah, so for timing on this bike, we rode Schleyer. It's a pretty quick trail in Whistler Bike Park. I would say more technical than anything, but there's definitely a few jumps and drops on there. For this this particular bike, uh, I was actually 2% slower than my fastest bike. I actually lucked out and got 
testing conditions that were pretty similar across the board. So pretty fair testing. Yeah, for me, my testing days occurred on a dry day and a rainy day. So the numbers don't quite correlate the way I would have expected. And the day I put down my time lap on the Yeti, I actually got my fastest time out of the whole session. Um, it was 1% faster than the second place finisher, which is the GT Force 29. When it comes to the component spec of the Yeti SP165, this build kit we have, it's really not lacking anything. And you'd expect that for $7,700. But I mean, all the way from the DT Swiss aluminum wheels to the suspension, the Fox Grip 2 fork, uh, the 36 and the DHX2 shock, it's not lacking. I mean, even the grips are the grips that I would run. It's got some nice ODI grips there, carbon bar, carbon cranks. Yeah, so the pros for the Yeti SB165, it's a super fun park bike, delivers exactly what Yeti says it will, and as an added bonus, if you want to climb, you can, it'll get you to the top of the hill. Uh, as you mentioned, Kaz, spec is dialed right off the showroom floor. I wouldn't change anything, Kaz wouldn't change anything. And finally, it has options. You can throw a dual crown fork on it, you can make it a mullet bike, and uh, I think, you know, people out there, they like to tweak their bikes, and uh, yeah, it gives you the option to do that. Cons for this bike, it's more of a play bike than a race bike. I mean, that might seem like splitting hairs, but it's noticeable on the trail. It just kind of wants to jib and play around. So if you're looking for something that's just absolute all about straight line speed, might not be the bike for you. Um, another con is the price frame only. It's going to set you back around $3,999. Now we're not super focused on price here at the field test, but it's worth mentioning. There's also the fact that this bike needs the proper terrain to really come alive. We mentioned that when it comes to these longer travel bikes, there's some of them you could, you know, easily just cruise on mellower trails. But this bike with its numbers, slack angles, amount of travel, it just really feels like it needs some proper mountains, big steep trails, big jumps, maybe a chairlift, but you can still pedal it. So if you don't have that in your backyard, there are better options that are more well-rounded than this one. So if you're a park rat that also wants to pedal up your local hill, I would give the Yeti a try. It's a free ride bike in this new modern era. Um, but it, once again, you can pedal up the hill and smash everything on the way down. Plus, it's got those 27.5 wheels. If you remember the 27 for life club, it's for you. Yeah. I don't know the assembly <laughs> for 27.5 for life, but I'm working on it. So there you have it. That's the Yeti SB165. Stay tuned for more from the Pink Bike Field Test, including a roundtable discussion discussing all these enduro bikes. Out from left to right, waiting to see when will stop the fight. Underneath these hazy nights, crazy nuts, slice and I was as loud.